All right, so we are back. Now this is going to be the second part of the Microsoft Flight Simulator VR setup for Quest 2. <laughs> That's a long intro, but what we're gonna be doing today is figuring out how to set up the simulator with the Quest 2 wirelessly. Now we can do that with the help of virtual desktop and then running Steam VR. And this is all gonna be done using the Steam version of the simulator. If you don't have the Steam version of the simulator, I will be making another video where we tweak some settings using the Microsoft version and how you can get that to work with a Steam VR headset. But for now, let's jump into the wireless setup so you can have a wire-free experience. Although I do see a significant hit in FPS doing it wirelessly, there is a lot more lag uh, latency. So the experience isn't quite as smooth as if you are connected with a link cable. So if you don't mind the performance hit, let's take a look at the settings, how to get everything set up and get to flying. Okay, so let's run through how to set everything up for a wireless experience with the Quest 2 running the Steam version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the first thing that we're gonna do is head to, uh, you can just search virtual uh, desktop. And it's going to bring up virtual desktop home, vrdesktop.net. And that is where you get the streamer app. You wanna download that right away, open it, install it, follow whatever prompts that it gives you. Once you have that installed, you can open it up you are going to change the Oculus username to whatever you've set up on your headset. Make sure it matches exactly. That's how they know how to communicate between each other. Uh, we're gonna leave that up, but minimized. I actually check uh, start with Windows and start minimized automatically. That way it's just always on in the background, ready to connect whenever I want to. So my interaction with the PC to get it started up is very minimal. You're gonna go ahead and head into your headset, head into the store, and you're going to be purchasing, so this does require a purchase of $16.99, the virtual desktop. You can go in there, search it, uh, type in virtual desktop, should show up, purchase it, download it, and then go ahead and open it up. And what happens is you'll see your desktop show up here. Mine is already set up and connected, so it's gonna go right into my desktop. Now, what you wanna do at this point when you have your desktop set up here is head into Windows Explorer, go into your local disk, program files, x86, then down into Steam, um, Steam apps, common, Steam VR, bin, Win64, and then down at the bottom, you're gonna see VR Startup. You wanna right click on that. Uh, which one is right click? There you go. And send that to the desktop. Um, what I did was rename mine to Steam VR. What that's gonna do is provide you a quick to start up the Steam VR environment and bring you into the homepage. So, all you have to do is double click on that and you're gonna see it brings you directly into the Steam VR home. Now, from this point, you can launch the flight simulator from your apps here, but I've found that it is, it's buggy and occasionally goes into a loop where it won't actually start up. And it's just all around more difficult to navigate those menus in the virtual environment rather than 2D. So. What I like to do is get everything set up um, in 2D here, all of your settings, everything, and then uh, control tab to start the, the VR. Uh, one setting that I do like to change here, and I've mentioned this for, for the wired setup as well, is in the NVIDIA control panel, you have your 3D settings. Um, global settings down at the bottom here, virtual reality pre-rendered frames is set to one. 
Um, I like to go into the Program Settings tab here, drop this down to Microsoft Flight Simulator. That way you're changing settings for the specific program. Uh, global settings will change it for everything. So let's drop that down and then head down to the bottom to the virtual reality pre-rendered frames. And you can set this, it's, uh, it's set at one typically. I like to set it at two. I've noticed a couple FPS increase by setting this to two. I've also noticed the same using the 3D application setting. So you can mess around with this to see what works best for your situation. So I'm gonna leave it at two. And then don't forget to apply at the bottom before closing that out. And then we are going to start the sim. So I will cut out now because this thing takes forever to load and then meet you guys back when everything has loaded up. Okay, now that everything is loaded up, we can see that for, for me, I don't know if this will be the same on everybody's uh, display, but I do have a 4K display here and it seems like it is trying to render everything at the headset's resolution because of the virtual desktop. So my Windows here is not the right size. So I'm going to press the Windows key, slide this over, and then hit the Maximize button. That way it's all on the same screen here. Okay, we are going to head into Options where we can look at the settings that I'm using for VR. So under the Graphics tab here, you can click over to VR and we can see that we are on 80 for render scaling, TAA, 50 for level of detail for the terrain, as well as 50 for the level of detail of objects. Now this is, these are the recommended settings from um, a forum post. I will link that in the description. I recommend following that exactly as a starting point. That's like a jumping off point for VR. And then depending on your specific system, what overclocking you have, what cooling solution you have, and what graphics card CPU combination you have, you should be able to either lower these or increase these uh, to suit your, or to maximize your frame rate. So I'm gonna keep mine pretty much exactly how it was set up uh, according to that post. And I do have my refresh rate set at 80 Hertz right now. Um, you can go up to 90 Hertz if your graphics card can support a steady 45 frames per second. And I have found that the 2080 Ti with no overclock is able to achieve that with up to 110 on the render scaling. So that just makes everything look a little bit better. Uh, if you are struggling to reach 45, you can, you can lower your refresh rate through the, uh, through the Oculus app, and that can be lowered down to the default, which is 72. That way you only have to hit 36 frames a second consistently to have a smooth experience. And what you can then do is either increase your render scaling if you have some GPU overhead, or decrease it if you just can't quite get there at 80. So you can copy these settings exactly and then adjust accordingly. So what we're gonna do is apply and save and then head into wherever we plan on flying, which just like I did in the wired version, I am going to fly right around the Empire State Building. Let's see, where is it here? There we go. Wait, Empire State Building. Set his departure. I'm gonna fly at the same time with clear skies, just so we can have a good comparison between um, what I was achieving with the with the wired version. So right around seven o'clock is pretty pretty great. So what I like to do when running VR on the simulator is set everything up in 2D, get all of your settings, everything right, then go ahead and hit fly, let it load get to where you're actually flying the aircraft in 2D, then pause it, switch over to your headset. That way you can just hit escape and then start flying. Makes it a lot easier so you don't have to set anything up through the virtual menus, which I find a little, a little tricky sometimes. So let's hit fly and load this up. Now in order to run this effectively, you absolutely need to have Wi-Fi 6. And I recommend getting the absolute best router that you possibly can 
that has that Wi-Fi 6 standard. That way you can achieve the, the best bandwidth possible because this requires a lot to be able to stream all of this data wirelessly to your headset. I'm using the Asus, Asus Zen Wi-Fi. I'll, I'll put it up there on the screen so you can see exactly which one I'm using. I've had great results with it. So now that we have everything loaded here, we're going to get ready to fly. And like I said, just get yourself in a position where you can switch over, you know, get your throttles right, nice and level, and then hit escape. And at that point, now we can switch over to VR. All right, and then hit control, tab. Oh, and we just had a crash. Okay. So now you've experienced what it looks like to have it completely crash on you. We're gonna go ahead and open it back up, get back into a flight, and then try again. The, the wireless setup, although it's great to not have anything attached to your head, is not the greatest. Okay, so we had to restart there, and all I did was open the simulator back up, head back to where I wanted to fly. Um, and then, like I said before, you hit ready to fly, get going nice and level, set your throttles up and everything, and then hit escape. That way you can be set to go, toggle VR, we'll put the headset on, and then all you have to do is hit escape and you're flying. So don't forget, um, while you're paused here, you have to hit space. You have to click on the windows, uh, the simulator window and then hit space, and that'll bring you into the cockpit. Uh, then you can hit escape, and escape again. And let's see what kind of frame rates uh, we're getting here. Let's see where my controller is. There we go. Oh, yikes, pretty low. So this is the sacrifice. All the settings are the same, and this is what we're getting through through the wireless setup. And you can see it's, it's absolutely un unplayable. You would have to lower the resolution down quite a bit to make this so that it is a playable experience. So let's see if we can't change some of the settings here and make it a little bit better. What you can do is in the virtual desktop you can change your your refresh rate, you can change your your image quality and everything, lower that down so that it's not maxed out. So let's go ahead and try that now. So what I did for um, settings is environment quality medium. Um, that's at 90 frames per second. This is for the desktop setting. So I don't really care about that too much. Um, under streaming, I did lower the VR to 72. Um, the bit rate I lowered down quite a bit. So let's turn this all the way up. I did click on this sliced encoding and then the VR graphics quality is set at medium. So let's go ahead and ready to fly here. Make sure we got control, we do, and escape. And into VR we go. So we are back in and with those settings, uh, what you guys just saw, we are reaching a pretty doable, um, Let's see, I'll bring it up here. I have to bring the controller up in front of me. That way I can see, there we go. Uh, 36, 35, 34. That may be different from what you're seeing on the uh, FPS monitor. This is FPS VR that is showing me with a reproduction ratio of 50%. Frame times are a little bit high, but it looks like it's pretty steady, about 35 frames a second, which is completely uh, playable. You know, for something that's fast motion, doing some pretty speedy flying, that's it might stutter and skip a little bit. And fast head movements are a little jerky. But if you keep things slow, it's, uh, it's pretty smooth. Again, you can lower the render scaling and the, the details, the level of details, to squeeze out a little bit more FPS. But overall, it is playable, and as you can see, we are wire free. And that would make sense if you had your PC in one corner of the room and maybe you've set up a, a simulator chair with all of your HOTAS and everything 
on the other side of the room, you could play um, wirelessly, completely wirelessly. I mean, aside from connecting your hotas through USB, but as far as your head goes, it would be wireless. So not a bad experience overall. I really like what Microsoft and Asobo have done. I think they are really trying hard to bring VR um, to everybody. And now we can see that it's not just for the HP Reverb G2, but anybody using a Steam VR capable headset can experience the simulator in VR as well. So kudos to them for bringing this as a free update. Well, I'm just gonna keep flying around. I can't stop looking around, this is amazing. And I know you guys don't wanna see this, so cue the outro. Okay, that was the wireless setup. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something with me today. If you guys don't want that performance hit that you get from using the wireless setup, I made a video on how to get everything working wired using the Oculus Link cable. You guys can check that out up here or up here. I can never remember which one it is. Somewhere up there, it's gonna go ahead and slide in. If you like this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell icon, that way you get notified when I release a new video. Thanks for watching.